Hi, and welcome back to Gin Reviews from Middle Tennessee. All right, so tonight I thought we would do something a little different. Actually, now it's kind of becoming a new norm here. Uh, I want to do a cocktail, of course, and I have, as you can see right next to me on my right here, the most lovely bottle, the most delicious bottle of yellow liqueur that you'll ever have in your life that is... It is chartreuse yellow at 43%, okay? So, we're going to make a cocktail, and it's, the cocktail name is the Yellow Jacket, okay? And of course, it's a gin cocktail with yellow chartreuse. Now, this cocktail is a variation of the Bee's Knees, which is another very amazing cocktail that on this channel, uh, I think uh, we've uh, talked about once or twice. So, what is yellow chartreuse? Well, first of all, what is the bee's knees, right? We're going to do this cocktail. Let's talk about this. All right, so it's a pre-prohibition era cocktail, right? Back in the day, uh, gin was pretty awful. You know? The, you know the stories of the bathtub gin? People would make gin in their bathtub during prohibition. And uh, it wasn't the most sanitary... <laughs> of gins and it was rough going down um, for the most part so they had to find a way you know to mask that and to just change the whole drink itself from being you know maybe a standard cocktail like a gin and tonic or you know a, a martini um, to sweetening uh, citrifying and uh, making it pop? I can't do a pop noise. That's the best I can do. Anyway, uh, although it was born from necessity, it just so happens that the combination of citrus and honey are perfect with tasty modern gins as well. As, as uh, We're going to go with this Tanqueray over here, this big bastard. Um, Tanqueray is absolutely in my top three, okay? It's very hard sometimes to pick even, you know, my top two, <laughs> uh, let alone the, the, the number one. And, and that's why I say three. There's always three gins I usually cycle through um, that I just love. Now, if I'm going to do a London Dry, okay, I'm, I'm going to do either a Tanqueray, a Beef Eater, or Fords, or Bombay Sapphire, you know, I hate it. But I will use it, though, just because... You know, I have it. <laughs> anyway, all right, so let's go back to what chartreuse is now, okay? So char char chartreuse ugh, is a, uh, it could refer to two liqueurs, all right? There's one that's green that's higher in the ABV, and then there's one that is yellow. Now, the original chartreuse, it's a vibrant, potent green, as I said, liqueur made with sugar, alcohol, and a secret blend of 130 plants think about that 130 i mean most gins botanicals they have uh like like this guy right here uh this beautiful old tom from gin lane uh, 1751 okay that has eight botanicals in it 130 <laughs> so green chartreuse like I said, has a little bit more alcohol, which is, I think it's at a 52, I want to say. And I know someone's probably going to correct me, but that's okay. Uh, I love green chartreuse. Don't get me wrong. It is absolutely as good as this yellow one here. They're both the same. Uh, they're amazing, okay? If, if you have a cocktail and it calls for either green or yellow chartreuse, you can't substitute that with anything else. There's nothing, nothing like this. Like, that comes close to the... To the nuance, the flavor, the herbal. I mean, 130 herbs. Think about that. That's amazing that they got it in this bottle. <laughs> um, so, this is the bottle itself, as I always do. It's beautiful, isn't it? It comes from France, as I always said. Uh, the year 1605. Wow. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to just read you the little description on the back here. Because it might, it might clarify a couple of things if I kind of skipped over them. Because I want this cocktail, obviously, right? Chartreuse. Should I do it in an accent? Nah, maybe. I might, I might switch into something a little British here. I know it's French, and, uh, you know, but I like to do the British. 
Chartreuse is made only by Carithian monks of La Grande. Chartreuse near Grenoble, France. Chartreuse today is still made from 130 alpine herbs, according to an ancient 1605 formula. The secret method of preparation is shared by three of those monks <laughs> and is protected by vows of silence. Chartreuse is sold in America as a green or yellow liqueur. The latter being a Shweta and milder. H type is also available in a rare VEP. The only liqueur to have a color named after it, a Chartreuse, is also famous for a flavor and fragrance totally unexpected, remarkably beguiling, unique in all the world. Chartreuse is most popular mixed with tonic or soda in a tall glass with ice ascended by a slice of lemon or lime but can also be enjoyed on the rocks or just straight from the bottle i mean that's kind of what i like to all right so the downside to a liqueur that doesn't any other liqueur cannot taste exactly like this it I'm, I'm being honest the downside to that is that this bottle is very very expensive and it's it's nothing you know, this is a, this is a rare treat. I, I got this today. I'm, I'm I'm celebrating some good news today that I'll discuss later on the program. But for right now, this is my celebration present right here for doing the most outstanding of work in the past two years of my life. Two years. I mean, think about that. It's not 130 herbs. It's not even anything related to anything like that. But two years. <laughs> okay. Let's do the cocktail, shall we? We shall. All right, so this uh, cocktail here is, it's very straightforward, okay? Uh, you're gonna need a honey syrup, uh, or, or you could just use straight honey. I, I have some clover honey here, and uh, I like to make my syrup right in this bottle, to be honest with you, and for the most part though, when I use honey in cocktails, I don't usually make a syrup out of it. I find if you just put it right into your cocktail, you don't have to worry about the dilution, if that has something to do with an effect. It's just... Oh, the other thing is, honey is a forever food, right? I mean, they found in the uh, Egyptian mummies, and uh, it was still edible. <laughs> um, palatable. It didn't kill anyone. Let's say that, right? But when you put water into honey and just say you don't put it in the fridge for a night okay and leave it out room temp you're gonna wake up the next morning to a really viscous foul disgusting rancid even bottle of yich sticky yich you know and uh so it's not uh, the most ideal you know i would just keep it a couple drops right out of the bottle will be fine if you do want to make a, a honey syrup, it's very simple. It's just as simple as a, as a simple syrup, actually. Um, same uh, ratio, one to one. Uh, you would take honey in hot water, and you would get it to a boil. You would stir it. You would completely chill it down, ice it down, and then it's ready for cocktails. All right, so I have myself here my shaker, my little shaker guy. And... Uh, <laughs> This recipe calls for, excuse me, lemon juice, which, see this? I love this guy. This is my, uh, reamer, I guess. This would be a reamer, right? I don't know. But, uh, it does a wonderful job on lemons. I mean, look at that. That's one lemon right there. Full ounce, which is what we need. So I'm gonna put that guy in there. Alright, so our honey syrup, uh, they recommend or the recipe goes for a quarter i'm sorry a half ounce of the syrup so we're going to take out this guy and we're going to fill it up to the first line oh it's hard to see and talk and do and show but right there that's a half ounce of... yeah you can see it kind of right all right so we'll pull that in there all right uh, and now we're gonna go with two ounces 
of Tanqueray. I haven't done a Tanqueray review yet. Like, am I kidding myself right now? I mean, I'm a gin reviewer and I haven't done Tanqueray. Tanqueray was the first gin that I ever fell in love with. And I was young. I was like 20 or so. I mean, yeah. Something like that. It was at a comedy. I think I told the story in the first video I did. Watch it to rehash it. I'm not going to waste your time with that again. I want this cocktail. I want it now. <laughs> All right. So we need two ounces of tank. So two ounces on this guy is the line uh, right under the top. And we're going to fill this exactly where it says. Perfect. Uh, all right. All right. See, if you notice how I put the ingredients in, I arranged them from the lowest to the highest cost. And the reason we do that is, say I messed up something, and I put the chartreuse in first. Now, if you, if I was hosting a party and I was playing bartender at the party and I did that and I messed it up I would be embarrassed and I wouldn't serve it I would drink it personally but I wouldn't serve it to someone because it wouldn't be what uh, you know I just talked up for the last hour or whatever it's been so um, that's why we put in the most expensive okay and the I didn't tell you the price on this guy right so this the yellow one here it retails for $70 okay um, I De definitely know a few places that sell it a little cheaper. It's not much, but uh, with tax here in Tennessee, it's it's it actually got to about seventy dollars. <laughs> so uh, it wasn't really that much of a, a difference, you know, maybe five dollar difference with the tax, but um, it's well worth it. Now, some some liquor stores out there, uh, smaller established liquor stores that have a very wide selection, a wide variety of liqueurs and alcohol and booze, might have uh, the two ounce you know, shooter, little guy, of the green chartreuse. Now I know my buddy up the street here who has, uh, who owns a Lixer liquor store here in Spring Hill. Uh, one of the most amazing, I've, I've talked about him in, in this, in this uh, channel before, he has knowledge that I wish I could extract because he's just he's so he's so personable first off right but second his store I, I go to every liquor store from here to Nashville right I mean I know the liquor stores I know like the setups I know the people I know how things are but right here in this town Spring Hill is the best liquor store that I've been to anywhere and it's all about it's all about the owner you know it's all about what he knows because he's the salesman and if he doesn't know a product that's on his shelf first the great thing about elixir is he'll tell you he'll tell you right away look you know what i i don't know i haven't had to let's see he has a tasting bottle he's gonna bring it out he's gonna have it with us and that's the way you should do it you know if you're gonna advertise something in your store you should know your product and you should know how to sell it and he does also if you need something rare a lot of my gins here that uh like here like Heyman's oh I'm sorry that's Bloom Heyman's looks almost the same Heyman's is right here uh he got that for me special ordered in and actually I have quite quite a few other ones so lovely man if you ever here in Spring Hill please uh I'm 31 on Main Street next to the food lion it's called elixir spirits his name is Tarek. you go in there he'll take good care of you he's a bourbon guy he's a gin guy he's a liquor guy he's a guy he's a good guy all right let's get out of that let's go back into this cocktail because the ice is really starting to melt here all right so we poured in the lemon the honey the gin and now oh, there's no cork on this unfortunately but we're still gonna do it yeah, I love that. <laughs> All right, so the recipe here, it calls for just a half an ounce of the chartreuse. And yeah, half an ounce might seem not like a lot, but it packs.
Axawala. Alright, I'm gonna put this halfer right there in my cocktail, but I am also gonna break out this little guy, because I love him. <laughs> and, uh, you know what? I'm gonna do just, just a real quick review of this chartreuse, this most, most amazing liqueur ever. And, uh, green chartreuse, by the way, is one of the main ingredients of the last word, which is another amazing gin cocktail that, uh, if you haven't had it, and you do go frequent bars that have maybe a, you know, a craft cocktail section, ask for the last word, and you will be blown away. All right. So right away, I mean, you could see the the legs on this guy, right? I mean, look at that. You could see there's honey. There's something sweet in there with all that sugar running down. I don't know if you could see it as well as I can, but it's just heaven. <laughs> it's so amazing. Okay. 130 herbs and I'm like trying to identify just one of them and it's hard I mean it's really hard especially on the nose but I definitely 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 detect some kind of mint um, it, the honey is there it's like in the background of all these herbs and and it's a spicy a spiciness of on the nose, and it's definitely on the palate. Let's let's take it down. Let's try it. Let me see if I could figure out a couple more of these alpine herbs here. Mm. Excuse me. You might notice. Um. Oh my God. Okay. Tangent. Tangent. Amazing. All right. All right, there's definitely, there's licorice, there's wormwood in there. Uh, there's definitely spearmint. There's got to be uh, maybe catnip, um, daffodil, chamomile. Um, I'm tasting floral, sweetness, honey, of course. And then the licorice. Uh, it's not licorice like it would be in, in absinthe. It, it's not that kind of licorice. And it's not even licorice like if you've got real black licorice and ate that. It's not like that. It's not that bite, that hard bite that licorice has. It's a swirl of curiosity. And really, if you can, if, if you've had this, if you've had chartreuse in your life, I'm sure you are a fan. I'm sure you're a fan. All right, well, Let's mix this guy up here and let me pour off the water that melted from my ice here. <laughs> uh, you know what? I might as well do it the old, the right way with the pop on. <laughs> that was a real scream. Um, mostly because I didn't put the top back on and I kept thinking, you know, the worst thing that could happen right now in this video, because there's no edits, is I take my elbow and smack this yellow chartreuse on the floor and guess what I did not that but close <laughs> all right let me pour out the water back to one thing at a time here all right it wasn't too bad I guess I mean you know I do I can talk <laughs> all right so we're gonna go right into this guy here and uh I think I showed you this trick, right? I was, I was just in case. Is any runoff? You hear that noise? That's your vacuum seal right there. It's creating that vacuum, so you know nothing's gonna fall out while you're shaking. All right. I don't usually shake stuff when I'm sitting, so I might look a little weird. I like doing this, I don't know why. It's just fun. Alright, so you want to shake for about 8 to 10 seconds until this happens right here. 
this frost on the outside of the, of the shaker, you know you're ready to enjoy a really ice cold cocktail. And the best way to enjoy a cocktail, ice cold. I mean, this is just my, uh, you know, two cents. <laughs> oh, uh, so I was going to say, uh, so I did finally buy myself a, um, one of those light ring things. So it, it, you could probably tell, see, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I mean, look at that. Look at the, the clarity in my, in my gins over here. And in fact, you know what? It's really cool just to like scroll over a little bit. Like, oh, look, they're in high def. <laughs> and there they are. 183. Yes, I counted. I have a uh, 183 gins from around the world. Some gifted, some bought, of course. Uh, <laughs> I am just. I am such a fan of gin. I mean, I think it's obvious at this point, right? All right, so we have a nice coupe here that I had with a little ice water in it just to cool it down. And I have my Hawthorne. And oh, oh, part of my strange reach here. One of my sieves. And we're going to double strain this bastard right now into this game. Look at that color, huh? Beautiful. It looks exactly like a bee's knees. Oh, and I've never had this, by the way. So, this is why I wanted to do this cocktail. Um, now, I've had many bee's knees. Uh, but when I saw this one, I was going over some, you know, some information on chartreuse just to you know liven up the show a little bit and try to get a nice interesting cocktail when this one came along I was like well yeah <laughs> we gotta try that alright so I also did a little bit of a lemon schwash here just a little peel I'm gonna express the oils I usually do it before I pour the drink in but right now it's kinda late or early or whatever it is and uh... See, I just twist the peel like this. Actually, you probably could see it right there. See, see the oils just kind of bursting out. I do it over the drink. Let them fall or they may. And then also I take a, you know, a swash here and just kind of rub it around here, seductively. <laughs> and there it is, our garnish. All right, let's do it and let's see really where we're at. Be still my beating heart. Mmm. Oh my god. Okay. It is one of the best, best bee's knees adult lemonade I've ever had. It is herbaceous, herbaceous. There's, there's just herb, herbal notes floating around in a beautiful cocktail coupe glass of chartreuse, lemon, and amazing tanqueray. It is outstanding. I don't, when, usually when I have a cocktail for the first time, and it's something I enjoy, I'll say it out loud to myself, wherever I'm at, damn that's good, god damn that's good. <laughs> Mm. The lemon plays with the chartreuse. It's like a tag team of citrus to herb to citrus to sweet. The honey in the chartreuse, it's amplified with the honey poured in right into the drink. I mean, it is, it is something you have to go out and try. I mean, and this is all stuff you can get mini bottles of if you're not a huge... Um, gin person or, or even a huge drinker and you know you just want to have something different than uh, the glass of red at dinner you know uh, be a little creative go out there and buy his ingredients man and make it make some cocktail shake it up man it's awesome you only live once right well 
most of us. <laughs> Cheers. Hmm. I seriously can sit here and just gab right now, back and forth to us, you know, just whatever comes into my mind. But we're at 25 minutes, and I'm sure. I'm sure we're uh, getting to that point where most of you have already switched off. And if you got to this point, thank you. You truly are my number one fan. <laughs> All right, well, from me to you, to you to me, to everyone here in Middle Tennessee, thank you so much for humoring me <laughs> and watching this passion of mine kind of unfold in this uh, video series you know it's cool too if you go on to the YouTube site I'm I also have a Facebook site that I pull from YouTube and it's gin reviews from Middle Tennessee from not of from I know I made a mistake here and there but that is the title and that's what it shall be known as anywho enjoy go out there Get some gin. Get yourself a shaker. Get some lemons fresh. Squeeze them. Squoze them. Put them in the cocktail thing. The shaker. You know what I mean. Shake. Strain. Sip. Enjoy. Alright. Have a good one, everybody. Ciao, and uh, hopefully I'll see you soon.